So I'm here with Z Sad Panda. You might remember that guy. No, you don't. <laughs> he barely remembers how to speak in English anymore. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's actually true. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really scared of doing that review with you. And we're talking about one of these three movies on this stupid Blu-ray three-pack. <laughs> Just the top one here, Supreme Champion. The best one, I'm pretty sure, of the set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to watch the other two, but I'm going to assume this is the best because it is Daniel Bernhard in it. Wonderful. I eagerly anticipate our meeting, Mr. Jennings. Right. And that's why we picked it. The man, the myth, the legend popped up on screen and I was like, oh my fuck, <laughs> that's Daniel Bernard, that's Zero. I need to, uh, to say that to, uh, to Phelous. He's great in this movie. He's like hamming it up big time as the villain and it's awesome. I created this place for my amusement to indulge all of my fantasies, old friend. And I will make Mr. Jennings a part of my pleasure. A salute to those who are about to die and the ultimate warrior will survive. He's going so big with his stuff. And then you got Stefan Boner there. Which is not an actor. Without one's health, there's nothing left at all. Thanks. But let's you and I have a little chat first. Sure. Nice weather we're having, huh? Bravo! Bravo! What a splendid display of mixed martial arts skill. I really hope this ends the entertainment portion of your greeting. He's in the UFC, right? And you, like, you can tell this guy does not know how to act. He was on the final show of The Ultimate Champion Season 1, and he lost, but he still got a contract because he was actually a, a really good fighter. You understand why he was picked to do movies, because he's charismatic, he's a good fighter, he's good looking. On press conferences of matches, he's actually really uh, charismatic and funny, you know, he's quick-witted. Translation? So I kind of understand why someone would think, oh, he would definitely work in a movie. No, acting is a job, a real job. <laughs> Translation? I seen a movie, you know, with Ken Shamrock in it. Why is Rockman here? Since when do you ask me shit, you bastard? He was way worse than Stefan Boner. Really? We're fighters, not murderers. They're not. But you are. There's no problem between us. Stefan Boner, <laughs> you can tell he's not an actor, but he does have very funny delivery sometimes. I don't know if that's the intention. Was that on purpose? <laughs> the Congressional Medal of Honor. Quite impressive. Nice Google search, buddy. Troy, he is someone you do not want to piss off. I get it, I get it. I'll tread lightly on Lucian. I have something for the champ later, and it's soft and warm. Sounds nice. There's more. It's just the delivery, because I don't think it's meant to be a funny line. Like, my favorite bit in this is when Daniel Bernhardt's telling him, oh, instead of paying to get your friend out of my little mansion house, you can do something else for me. And he goes, translation? I'll get you whatever she owes, Gallows. Money, Mr. Jennings, is something I do not need. But you may repay her debt in another way. Translation? <laughs> like he really does not understand anything he's saying. Translation? Translation? I, I think he just didn't get it. <laughs> it probably wasn't even a script. He's just confused. He was asking, you know, he was looking at the director. He's like, one thing that I think really helps with making Stefan Boner's delivery sound extra amusing is the fact that his voice kind of sounds like a blending of Judge Reinhold and Joel Hodgson. Oh, I was just kidding about the cat burger. <laughs> You'd make a better hat. What a dopey looking robot, man. The polar bear was a lot better than me. <laughs> We've had our drinks, taken a ride. Jenny? Tell me what's going on with you. Really early in the movie when he's talking with his friend in the car. Jenny. Jenny, yeah. I noticed something. First of all, Dutch angle. Everywhere. I think someone was just sitting there with the camera in their lap, like for the shot reverse shot while they're talking in there, because it's so crooked and there's like a bunch of empty space to the side of both their heads for no reason. It looks like they're parked on a hill, but you see the fire shot and they're not. I was watching that scene. I swear to God, every time they would switch angle, I was like, <laughs> I, I was ready to, to see them fall down the scene, you know? So Jenny is saying a line and he cuts back to Stefan Bonnard listening to her and he looks like he's reading the script to know what she's saying. He's like, 
I didn't want you to find out who I really am. It's so funny because he's reading all the script, even not his lines. <laughs> There's one part where they're in the, the stupid good guys hang out, the strip club. My God, the strip club. Where his two buddies are talking and he's sitting there like, awkward as shit the whole time and he looks at the camera at one point like, mm. probably saved our just that side bag of. i never knew that what am i doing here the strip club is a phenomenon you know it's it's a church the church of ted fox and george saunders because the movie was produced by ted fox and richard styles and the screenplay and scenario it's ted fox and george saunders Ted Fox plays Clue. How you doing, Clue? Great, champ. And Saunders plays Mick, the two owner of the street club. They are the heroes of the movie. They the focus point. You know, it's all about them when you think about it. Yeah, because they do come and help save the day at the end. The last 20 minutes of the movie is all them, you know, basically. They're the best. Stefan Boner even says, yeah, they're the best. They're really great guys. The best. It's a full day of shooting for them, you know, just move around the strip club to have naked ladies all around them. Yeah, there's a lot of pointless boob shots in this movie. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Troy. I wanted to see you again. I'm not really good at exits and goodbyes and keeping in touch. I really am sorry. Apology accepted. Troy, the good guy. He, he takes her to a strip club. What kind of first date is that? Let's reconnect at a, at a strip club. <laughs> it's such a weird first date. I guess this is them reconnecting after breaking up. But yeah, this is not a good reintroduction to the relationship. <laughs> Let's give this a second chance. In a strip club. And she's like, you know what? I made a huge mistake. I'm never talking to you again, Troy. Bye. <laughs> Then the next 15 minutes is just Mick and Clue saying Troy is such a fantastic guy. Like he was a soldier, he saved people, he got the purple heart and all, all kind of metal. One time he saved a puppy in a tree, he helped planet Earth. By the way, do you enjoy the strip club? <laughs> because he, he comes here a lot. <laughs> he stopped acting, you know, he's not there. Huh? Why am I here? <laughs> Awkward. I also liked about this strip club was it was called The Score. That was the name of a sports channel they had here. It was the one that aired SmackDown, actually. We'll get you back to SmackDown in just a few moments. Welcome back to our Score Studios. I'm Martine Guy along with Greg Samsoni. This is the winner of our SmackDown contest. So there used to be like promos of like people like, oh, hey, this is Crash Holly and you're watching The Score. This is Rhino from The Alliance and I know the score. Hey, it's your Olympic hero and WWF superstar, Kurt Angle, and I know the score. Hi, I'm Wayne Gretzky, and I know the score. I'm the junkyard dog, and I know the score. It cuts to a strip club, you know? <laughs> you see Ted Fox Entertainment and Supreme Studio like four times, I counted. The first 40 seconds of the movie is just saying, who made the movie? Ted Fox, he made the movie. And this is Ted Fox's only directing credit. He's mostly a producer. And then you got a, a Stefan Bonner retrospective, all of his matches and whatever, to show he's good. Okay. This is all about his personal history, which the movie doesn't actually have anything to do with. <laughs> so it's just a fill time. No rules! Fight! And I was immediately like, bring a gun. <laughs> bring a gun. <laughs> Why is there a referee? <laughs> no rules! What's the name of the bad guy again? My name is Lucien Gallows. And he's like, it's the most dangerous tournament. No rules. Rules are, there are no rules. He just did that. You know, just before going to the strip club and it's fine. <laughs> it's the exact same spot too, because you can tell it's just in that black void where they've got the octagon thing set up. <laughs> you know, there's establishing shot of a house. And it's weird because I don't think it's the house where they were filming because the, the architecture doesn't, doesn't match. No, they show a two-story house. And like, there's one shot where they show this two-story house and then fade into the one they're actually at, which is one story. So it's like, look at this house, fade into the other shot. And it's like, that's not the same place at all. Well, I think they didn't have the authorization to film the two-story house because when you look at it, it's kind of grainy and it looks like a camera where you zoom in a bit to like, Shh, they're going to see us. <laughs> There's a few parts where they have like drone shots and the footage is noticeably crappier. So it's just stock footage they bought or whatever. But there's even a part where he's like pressing buttons 
buttons on the intercom talking to Lucian Gallows. And it's part of the stock footage. It's not even something they shot. They couldn't shoot him pressing buttons on an intercom talking to him. And like the audio is really crappily cut together too. Like, hey, I'm here. He's like, come on in. <laughs> Mr. Jennings? I'm here, Lucian. At some point, Kaya is calling Mick and Clue to say, hey, come here and save Troy. Well, she actually picks up the phone. She make a number and then she doesn't say a thing and you just have a shot at the score. And I know the score. Where Mick picks up the phone and is like, yeah, sure, we're going to save him. Then he cuts back to Kaya, but she's not saying anything. Yeah, this is Mick. Uh, yes, I understand. All right. Um, we're on our way. It's like she didn't know what they said on the other line, so you're just like, you know, uh, yeah, we'll just have their dialogue there. You just pick up the phone and pretend you're listening or saying something. And there's the one who played Kaya there. She was on that crappy Baywatch parody show, Son of the Beach. And this was like one of the last things she ever acted in. There's like one TV movie that came out after this, but then that was it. She was done. Another person that was done was Bambi. Hi, I'm Bambi. Can you guys want to read? The most useful character ever. She's there mostly to get her boobs out. That's why she's there. Hi! What the hell? Yeah, she's basically naked and making um, weird offers to Troy, and every time Troy's like, no, I'm a good guy. The scene with them is really funny. She's there, I guess, sent by Ciro to try and seduce him. Like, oh, this is one of your perks of fighting in Ciro's underground MMA shit. And then he's just like, Actually, I'm really tired. Can we just go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. You could stay here tonight, but we just sleep. It's like, but I want to sleep with you. Translation? Don't you think I'm sexy? Translation? <laughs> You can use that clip all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, you told me that they censor words. Probably saved our just sense that bag. You chicken. But they show naked woman. There is one part where they left one in, but yeah, there's a few parts where they censor them and it's odd. You rotten son of a bitch. Jenny, she meet Troy. She say, hey, let's hang out tonight. Go to the score. And I know the score. Mick and Clue are like, Troy is the best. And they're like, okay. And they leave immediately. Yeah. It's like, why did we go there? Because yeah, she's pretty much, can we leave actually? This place blows. Troy is like, so what's your problem? What's your big problem, Jenny? I'm an addict. She goes, I'm an addict. And like, there's a big pause. And then she goes, a gambling addict. A gambler. You don't say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the equivalent of the results are in. I got breast cancer. Translation. Translation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a man named Luton Gallows. He owns and controls all the casinos around here. Just flee with me, leave the country. And I, I try to think for Troy, like, why would I do that? I, I got no problem. <laughs> You're my ex-girlfriend and, you know, obviously I don't like you that much because I took you to my buddy's crappy strip club. That was a signal. Get the clue. <laughs> Honestly, like, this movie doesn't seem like it likes women that much. No, 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 really not. It's very sleazy at times. One day or two day in a strip club surrounded by naked women and they, they make all these sexist jokes. So it's just the two bros <laughs> to being very sexist. It, it's very douche bro -y. And like Ted Fox, he kind of looks a lot like uh, Mark Marrow does these days. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, uh, that's a good comparison, yeah. He's like, yeah, there's people after me, and immediately the guy shows up. It was nice of them to wait for the exposition to be done to jump out and try and grab her. And for some reasons, all the fighting scenes are filmed like wrestling entertainment, you know, like more like WWE fights. And then he start holding submissions to the ground. <laughs> Tap out! Tap out! And he gets like knocked over the head by another guy while well, he's got that guy in the submission. So yeah, clearly not the greatest move there. Hello? But let's you and I have a little chat. They zoom in on his mouth like this is going to be a big dramatic reveal or something, but then it's just, it's a random cut back and then you just see him there. And like, why did they shoot it like that? You have to explain to the audience the sound come from here. Translation? Oh, I see. I understand talking. But does Stefan Boner? 
Translation? Translation? I do like how amicable Stefan Boner is the entire time, too, while Sierra's like, No, I kidnapped Jenny, you have to come get her. And he's just kind of like, Sure. Yeah, I guess that sounds okay. I don't know if I can make it by four, though. If you don't mind. Sure. Nice weather we're having, huh? Look, there's no way I'm gonna be able to make it by four. Mr. Jennings. One of my other passions is promptness. <laughs> there's traffic and I had to go back to the score again. <laughs> Which he does, like, there's no rush here to save Jenny. He's like, yeah, I'll go hook up with my buddies. I'll tell them what's going on, but we're gonna have some drinks and stuff. Please, come in. Welcome to Heaven's Gate. They really close and breathing into each other like, I missed you, man. <laughs> and then the guy appeared and Stefan Bonnard made the most racist jokes immediately. You see only me. Thanks, but not really in the mood for Chinese food. These some real terrible one-liners. Like, he can barely handle one-worders. Translation? <laughs> you noticed in this, these these scenes which is all just the same scene it's just him walking into the same spotlight in the same room over and over like he beats one guy walks to the same spot again another opponent appears walk to the same spot a waiter uh let me get an iced tea with lemon and then give the best line you know it's on the same level of translation translation the guy's like i'm not a waiter and Stefan Bonnard goes, we drink, we dance, we sing. We don't drink. We drink, we dance, we sing. <laughs> what are you doing? We sing! Translation? There's a woman he fights at the end and he gets pretty sexist again with her. Like, he knocks her out and then pats her on the ass after she's unconscious. It's like, creepy. <laughs> but why did Ciro have those guys fight him just in this random void? Like, why didn't he have those fights happen in the cage? Because, like, apparently he wants to have his little underground MMA things going on, but he's just going to have these fights for no one except him, I guess. I, I guess if you suspend your disbelief, it's just to, to see if he's actually a good fighter, you know, to test him a little bit out of the blue. He must know he is, right? Because why else would he have invited him here? Like, he has a history, apparently, of fighting. That's the point of showing his real-life history of fighting at the beginning. So, like, why would he not know that? Kaya is kind of getting in love with Troy. Out of the blue again. This is after they talk about Lucian being sick. Right, that's the, the one thing that baffles me. They were like, uh, you know, Lucian is actually thick and he's actually a good guy. I was like, no. <laughs> it's almost like they want to act like there's going to be some redemption arc, but it does not happen. And yeah, he's sick from that magic movie disease where he can act normal most of the time. He can get in fights, but he coughs once in a while, needs some pills, and then he's back to normal. Just at that point. And he's like, oh, I'm dying. I am like terminally ill, but I can act normal most of the time. How bad is he? He's dying. He's always been kind and generous to me. They tried to build him as this conflicted character. He probably sells drugs, he's into human trafficking, he's organizing bad... he's a bad person. <laughs> he forces people to be slaves, he shoots someone in the back later. I owe you. Debt pay. I don't know anyone anything. It is very weird that Troy and Kaya get romantic after discussing how sick Lucian Ciro is. Nothing turns me on more than terminally ill people, I guess. And Jenny's okay, like, she's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I don't understand. It is so weird, because you think he's still gonna be romantic with Jenny once he saves her, but yeah, then it's like, nope, Kaya. Jenny's like, oh, sure, no problem. And then, at this point, the tournament starts. A salute to those! about to die. Zero, the greatest underground MMA promoter. They keep talking about it, but the tournament is actually very short and the dude fight immediately. You know, like there's this big guy that almost killed the other guy and Troy save him with doing CPR. He's such a good guy. Oh, don't you me, I'm going to do CPR. <laughs> Nothing bad's going to happen today. The best pound for pound fighter in the world. <laughs> And then the, the tournament is over. So I win, I take Jenny with me, and Daniel Bernard is like, oh, oh, oh no! Jenny and I are leaving now. Oh, oh, oh no! 
After the tournament has finished, there's this completely baffling as to why it's even their scene of Lucian greeting an older couple. Hey, how are you? Thank you for coming. Oh, did you enjoy the show? Yes, we did. <laughs> this must have just been the parents of someone who worked on the movie who just wanted to be in it. Like, there's no reason for the scene to exist. And it's also confusing because Lucian says, enjoy, even though the show's over. Enjoy. <laughs> And then it becomes like a most dangerous game, kinda. If you survive this, you and Jenny may leave. So we're no longer fighting, huh? Just killing. It is a real bait and switch with this movie, because yeah, it acts like the big tournament's gonna be the cage fight. But then it's like, no, hunting people in the woods. Before this happens, though, actually, they decide to escape. So Kaya helps Troy get out of his room. They grab Jenny. They run down the hallway for like... It's not even a minute, like it's 10 seconds. And then Lucian's there like, aha, I caught you, escape foiled. <laughs> How very disappointing. That's it. And we got the best scene in the movie. I sent you the screen cap immediately. <laughs> You got Lucian sitting in a chair with his own picture on the side. It's like a big smile picture. Clearly there's nothing to do with this. <laughs> to say, oh, look at how twisted he is. He's rich, he's smoking a cigar, he's listening to classic music while people are getting beat up. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but like you say, Daniel Bernard is hamming it up. So it, it makes it okay. This was so very unnecessary, Mr. Jennings. He is amazing. I love him in this movie. And like, this is the performance this type of movie needs. It helps it so much. Cause if he was like flatter around where Stefan Boner is, it would not be nearly as enjoyable. He's not going that high is that he, he become ridiculous. You know, he's actually believable as a character. He's just in that soft spot that make him entertaining and not completely stupid. All your money, wealth, and power. Look at what you use it for. To indulge your petty hedonistic whims. Alas, we cannot help who we are, Mr. Jennings. Damn you, Zero. While Troy's getting beaten, he's internal bleeding. I was expecting like his buddy from TNA, Ken Shamrock, to come down and tell him all about internal bleeding. Do you remember how many times Ken Shamrock had internal bleeding in WWF? I think Shamrock has sustained some internal injury of a man that's already got an internal injury. Is Shamrock bleeding? He may be bleeding internally. Oh. Oh, Ken Shamrock's got that internal bleeding again. Look, he's making his way to the ring. Oh, he's got that internal bleeding. <laughs> I think Jericho made him have internal bleeding again and then that's like one of the last times you see him. That's good. Shamrock has had a history of problems with internal bleeding. We come to the manhunting part which is actually the most entertaining part of the movie for me because it was so bad. You got Mick and Clue joining the party. All the fighters are okay to manhunt someone but the thing is it's filmed in such a way you never know where you are. You see parts where it looks like you know one of the hunters is right near them with a gun and then you see them standing out in the open like nothing's the matter. It makes no sense. Having a chat. Do you love him? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But as a friend. There's one part too where a guy comes out from a tree and I swear this was shot in like the evening or something. They were losing light because <laughs> it looks way darker than any other shot in the rest of this. It feels like they all turn it around the same tree, you know, but <laughs> not seeing each other. The hunter should see you because you're standing up in the middle of nothing. So like, where are they? To the one who kills you, 10 million dollars. 10 million dollars, which is way higher than the budget for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best hunters can't find them, but Mick and Clue, who are the real best, they will just shoot everyone from the side really easily. Every time they move around, they just duck a little and they have clear shot on everybody. <laughs> They're the best. The ancestors await you. <laughs> Your first jerk off. Nice timing. There's a part two where Jenny has a chat with Clue. Oh yeah, I, I think uh, Troy really loves Kaya. And he's like, does he love her too? Because she's in love with Troy. Does Troy love her? You guys don't have time for this. You're in the middle of fleeing from a bunch of people trying to kill you. Mick is into uh, human trafficking too. Hey ladies, I got a few poles at my club for you. 
is harvesting women in the forest. They are so scummy, you know, I believe that. I believe that's how he gets his workforce. I'm glad that at least they were wearing something more appropriate than when the one of them fights Troy with that chest handkerchief. It's like, is that the best attire for fighting? <laughs> yeah. You know the guy that almost died? Why are you kissing me? This guy ran with a gun to Troy. He's like, I didn't forget you saved my life. And then he stopped and said, no, I like you. And then Ciro immediately shoots him in the back. I don't know anyone anything. Ciro shoots him in the, in the belly right after the, pff, ah, fuck. I love that that shot happens and it's like Troy does not react at all even though he's holding him in his arms by that point so the bullet's like really close to him it's like, psh, like mm. are you dead translation translation <laughs> <laughs> Troy has this big battle right before this too with the number one lackey guy who kind of looks like Putin. How you feel about the sleeper? Sleeper? Oh yeah, real crowd pleaser. Like he kills him. The movie acts like this is a big deal. It's not, no one cares about this guy. But then it's like Ciro shows up with this guy who looks almost the same. That we never saw before. He must have a closet full of henchmen that look kind of like that same guy. Just like, oh, well, that one's dead. Rotate him out, new one. Troy, you're going to fight me or else I'm going to shoot you. And Troy's like, okay, let's fight. Okay, but if you don't fight me, I'm going to shoot you. And Troy's like, translation. And they throw an elbow and then uh, Lucian catches elbow. He's like, if you don't fight me, I shoot you. <laughs> Translation? Zero does the name drop of what this movie was originally called. I needed you to fulfill my final and perhaps most complex fantasy to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the ultimate warrior. We're gonna fight to find out who is the true ultimate warrior. In a grand finale of champions to see who indeed is the ultimate warrior. The German title was Bloodsport. Yeah, Daniel Bernhardt was in one of the Bloodsport sequels. I guess they're trying to trick you into thinking it's Bloodsport. But yeah, the original title, the working title, before they changed it to Supreme Champion was Ultimate Warrior, which is very amusing. It's like, who wants to be the ultimate warrior? Ugh, no, thank you. And you actually got him in the back going, whoa. <laughs> No! I always get what I want. The ultimate warrior. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great if they just got him. Go, ah! <laughs> ah. <laughs> I love you, Lucian. And then you, you got the most anticlimactic fight because it's really short. Yeah. Like, I expected more. It's like they got Daniel Bernhardt for this. And at first it's like, are they even going to get him in a fight? Because it's taking so long. But yeah, this fight is really lackluster from what you'd expect. Finished, Gallows. It's over. When I say it's over, Mr. Jennings. Then he just punches him again a few times. Like, punches him in the gut. And then that's when he's dying. It's like, oh, that was a great second win there. Aha, it's not over yet. <laughs> no, it's over. So if you punch uh, someone with cancer odd enough, it becomes super cancer. And he dies immediately, you know? Lucian. Mr. Jennings. Fatality. It's like really good timing. It's good like, you know, it wasn't like right after. We'll find out who's the true ultimate warrior. Ugh! They also kind of act like this was a redemption. Why? Like they stand there acting sad. Kaya's kind of weeping over him. This guy just shot someone in the back and then the gut like in cold blood. And he just set a bunch of killers after you with a bounty on your head. Like you're really sad about him now. He's insane. <laughs> you know, He's a human trafficker. Again, I assist on that. Did you notice too, like how often he says Jennings? No. He says Jennings a lot in this movie. Good morning, Mr. Jennings. 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 This is Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings is here. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings here. Troy Augustus Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Oh, uh, Mr. Jennings. And you will find Mr. Jennings. We must keep an eye on Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Interesting fellow, Mr. Jennings. Well done, Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. So, Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. An insightful question, Mr. Jennings. 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 You ready, Mr. Jennings? Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. 
Mr. Jennings. But now it's to say it, yeah. If there's a lot of Jennings. And then, guess what they do? They go to the score. I know the score. And they're like, uh, Jenny, do you want to work here? It's like, uh... May I suggest working here? As a bartender. It's like, oh. It's an honorable profession, and I'd be your teacher. Uh... What about you, Kaya? Well, I was thinking about the role of love slave for a while. Uh, uh, so, uh, would you recommend this movie to someone? If you can find it, this movie's actually pretty hard to find. It's like a, a German treasure, because most of the DVDs are in Germany. Yeah, apparently, yeah, that's where this movie was a hit, I guess. Very <laughs> nice. It is very amusing. Stefan Boner gets quite a few laughs out of me because of his delivery, and Daniel Bernhard is amazing. It is kind of sleazy in a few parts, so that is a bit <laughs> awkward, but it's incompetent with it. Like, I've seen some sleazy movies that are just kind of uncomfortable with how sleazy they get. This is just kind of incompetently sleazy, so it's mostly amusing. Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean, but I'm pretty sure it's just to have Ted Fox and Josh Saunders being around naked women all day. You know, they didn't care about translating that to the movies. Translation? But it was a fun movie. Yeah, it was actually enjoyable to watch because it's only an hour 10, which is a perfect time for a bad movie. This is the only movie that really starred Stefan Boner. I saw he had a small part in some other movie, but this is the only one where he was like a main character. Yeah, I guess it was his uh, demo, you know, he's uh, shot at being an actor. He's cleaner than Mother Teresa. I get it, I get it. I'm pretty sure he can be good, because like I said, when you watch the guy in a natural state, he's actually very funny, you know, and charismatic. But if you have a bad uh, director, I think it's most on the part of Saunders and Fox than on Stephen Barnard, you know, so... I, I want to see him again. Sounds nice. It reminds me of most movies that you've seen Stone Cold Steve Austin or Kurt Angle in. Because those two guys, I think with a good good material and a good director, you could get a really good performance out of them. Because they clearly have that in them to do. But like most movies they've been in are pretty bad. Hustle by Adam Sandler. It's a movie about basketball and he had actual real NBA players. He was smart enough to work around that. Supreme Champion is the opposite of that. They couldn't tell who can act or not. <laughs> Translation? Say my pedater. I'm going to do my French moment of the video. You can meet me at my pedater. It's pied à terre, I mean foot on the ground. It's a word to say my um, my flat house, you know. Pedater. And for some reason, Daniel Bonard say pedater, which means nothing. Translation.